uh, being certain about that, allegedly being certain that there is no God. Um, I am not certain that there is no God. Um, I, in, in the God delusion, I constructed a seven point scale from uh, one, which is somebody who absolutely knows there is a God, up to seven, somebody who absolutely knows that there is not a God. And I think I describe myself as a 6.5. <laughs> um, so I, I, You're covering all bases. Yeah. You realize no, that? No, 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 because, because it, 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 the gentleman is absolutely right that, 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 you, that no scientist should say categorically, there is no anything. I mean, in the same way, you can't say there are no fairies. and You can't say there, there's no pink unicorn in the room. You mustn't say that because, because you have to be doubt. You have to doubt everything, be sceptical, be open to, to evidence. Now, um, there could be some kind of supernatural being. I bet there is a, a superhuman being, by the way, somewhere else in the universe, because the universe is a very big place. And we, so almost really? certainly, uh, sure. Describe the superhuman being that would be somewhere else in the universe. How can I describe it when I don't know anything about it? I mean, well, the whole but you point said, is, I'll bet there is. I, you must I, I have bet, some concept yeah. of what this... The bet is a, is a statistical bet. It's saying that the, the odds of that, it's saying that the, the odds of life arising on a planet are such that we, we can't measure them, but, but, but I suspect that they're such that, given that there are, I forget how many it is, but, but to use Carl Sagan's alleged phrase, billions and billions of, of planets, it would be very surprising if this is the only planet in the entire universe where there's life. And I think it would also be surprising if this is the only planet in the universe where there's intelligent life. And there's no particular reason to think that our form of intelligence is the highest there is. So there could well be alien beings elsewhere in the universe that are so far ahead of us that we would treat them as gods. But that's a very different thing from saying that there, there was an intelligence at the start of the universe. Mm -hmm. Because what I'm talking about is evolved beings. And evolution is the explanation for how you can get to the sort of complexity that we recognize as intelligence. And, and those, those alien beings would have come to be through the same process of evolution that that seems likely to me. The rest of life would Yes, have. that seems likely to me because we do have the, the, the Darwinian theory of evolution by natural selection is an astonishingly powerful force, which once it gets going, it's quite very difficult for it to get going, but once it gets going, it tends to produce great complexity. And so if there is alien life elsewhere in the universe, I would bet, it's only a bet, but I would bet that it's come about by Darwinian means. No other theory has ever been suggested that works. No feasible other theory has ever been suggested to produce organized complexity. It's superhuman because this these beings have had longer to evolve. Presumably, or why? yes. Presumably, I mean, longer to evolve. I mean, it, after all, if, if we if we could get in a time machine and come back in in five hundred years time, mm -hmm. uh, we would presumably meet our descendants who were far more sophisticated in their knowledge of the universe than we are. And so I'm conjecturing that. There's, there likely are beings elsewhere in the universe that are as superior to us as we are superior to medieval peasants. If we came back in that time machine in 500 years, would most of the mysteries be solved? You're asking me to guess. I, I, <laughs> what do you think? I, I suspect so, actually, but, but people have been wrong about that before, and so I'm genuinely open-minded. So we know, we'd know what remains right now unknowable about human consciousness, maybe? I think it's quite likely, yes. To the phones to Martha in Rochester. Hi, Martha. Hi. Yeah, thank you for taking my call. Sure. I was just wondering, what, um, Mr. Dawkins, what do you think about the movie that came out last summer um, by Ben Steins? You were interviewed in it, um, Expelled. What did you think about that? Uh, and if you ever saw the movie in Yes, I have seen it. Um, I actually saw it in Minneapolis. Um, uh, and uh, um, it was rather a, a funny episode. Uh, which I perhaps won't, won't go into. Oh, no, wait a minute. You have to go into <laughs> okay, that. Okay. What, what happened? Um, I was taken by P.Z. Myers, who runs a very famous blog uh -huh. um, from, from uh, Minnesota. Um, and he uh, obtained tickets to, to go on, on the internet like every, everybody else. And we were queuing up, and he, he and I and his family and a number of other people. And um, an usher came and, and recognized P.Z. Myers and threw him out, <laughs> even though he was in the film. <laughs> and credited with grateful thanks in the, in the film for being interviewed. But I you? also was credited, but they didn't recognize me. So I got in, and at the end, uh, the producer, um, a deeply dishonest man, um, was standing up and taking questions. And I stood up and challenged him, why did you throw out Dr. Myers, who, after all, you thanked in the film? 
and it was a, a bit of a scene. I mean, it was, it was, but let, let, let me get to the film itself. A, a deeply disreputable piece of work. Uh, P.Z. Myers and I and Eugenie Scott and various others were deceived into taking part by being told that the film was very different from what it actually was. We were never told that it was a creationist front. Um, so um, I, I never actually heard of Ben Stein before, but I, I met this man uh, and he started asking me questions. I actually um, told him pretty much what I just told you about the possibility of there being highly intelligent aliens. Um, and the, the context in which I did that was that he said to me, can you conceive of any circumstances in which you, would ex you could expect that life on this planet could have been intelligently designed? And I said, the only circumstances I can think of, bending over backwards to try to put the, mo the best light I possibly could on the theory of intelligent design, would be if life on this planet had been designed by a superior scientific intelligence on another planet. I didn't say I believed in that, mm. but I said that's the only kind of intelligent design that I thought even had a prayer of a chance of being right. This was ch distorted in the film to say Dawkins believes in, in little green men uh, and believes that little green men created life on Earth. And that's, the, that's the kind of typical dishonest trick that that film perpetrated. And so when you stood up in the audience, was the producer shocked to see you there? I can't read his mind, uh, but I presume he was, yes. To the phones to Kent in Mankato. Hi, Kent. Thanks for waiting. Hi. Uh, quick uh, comment and then a couple, of, a few quick questions here. Um, I find myself that I'm, I'm potentially evolving into a deist uh, because I believe it's possible to manipulate and package uh, the data that goes into a religion. And then my question, I'll go through these quick and then take the answers off here. What what, how do you explain what was there before the Big Bang? Now that's the theory I'm familiar with. That's one. The next one is I have an in-law that had a near-death experience, and he can, when he was clinically dead, he can tell us what, who was there, what was going on. I, I, I don't know how that gets explained. And then the third question is, do you believe religion allows for the control of, of the masses? Uh, yes to the third question, get that out of the way first of all. Um, the first question, uh, what, what came before the Big Bang? Uh, nobody knows. I'm not a physicist. Physicists are better qualified than I am to answer it. Uh, physicists will often say there's no such, that, that the question doesn't even mean anything, that time itself began in the Big Bang. Now I don't understand what that means. Physicists uh, will say that, that, that time itself, that it's a bit like saying that Stephen Hawking's used the analogy it's a bit like saying what's north of the north pole it doesn't mean anything you can go on going north and when you hit the north pole you can't go any further north than, than that there are physicists who will say that you can't even ask the question what came for before the big bang what i would say which seems to me to be common sense and logic is that whatever came before the big bang or whatever caused the big bang to happen or however the big bang happened is a big mystery it's one that physicists are working on constructively and whatever else you may say about it, it's not going to be helped by postulating a divine intelligence. Because if you postulate a divine intelligence, then you've still got the problem of explaining where that came from. So you're not going to get anywhere by that means. You better follow another avenue, which is what physicists are following. And I'm afraid I can't follow them because I'm, I don't have the right kind of brain. Are you 